Should you stay at work, work longer at your crappy old job to increase your retirement income? Well, there's a new study out there that says you should. And I'm going to share with you why the study actually, if you dive into it, shows you otherwise. A little bit counterintuitive here, my friends, but you got to get beyond just looking at headlines and read the data. Now, these guys aren't saying you should stay in your crappy old job. They're not saying that. But uh, I think a lot of financial planners are going to use this study to show you why you should stay working in your crappy old job, saving more money and deferring taking Social Security for longer. And I'm going to show you otherwise. So let's dive right into this. Welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends. The place you come to learn about sustaining your retirement income and hopefully getting out of that crappy old job to enjoy your life because you only got one. Make it count. So let's, don't forget to subscribe, of course. And as always, uh, comments and thumbs up help me immensely. So we might, let's see, I got, uh, let, we might do this in a couple of different videos because it's a, uh, it's a wonderful topic and, uh, and the research is, is, is fantastic. So we're going to show you the power of working longer by these four uh, academics. Uh, we got, we start with John Chauvin or Chauvin, I'm going to call him Chauvin uh, from Stanford. Uh, and this is the uh, paper research papers through NBER, which is the National Bureau of Economic Research. Uh, he's a PhD. I think he holds a Charles Schwab Chair of Economics and Financial Literacy or something like that over at Stanford. Uh, so he's got chops. Uh, his partner, uh, uh, Sita Slavov, over at uh, George Mason University, and again through MBER. Uh, then they got Gila Bronstein uh, from Cornerstone Research. I'm not familiar with that person or Cornerstone. And Jason Scott, uh, who's actually with Financial Engines, and Financial Engines has just merged with uh, Rick uh, Edelman's uh, firm. And they're a pretty big player. So I'm not familiar with Jason either. I, I did find odd. He's got a Yahoo URL for his Gmail account or for his uh, email, but that's fine. I mean, these guys have academic chops for sure. Articles in 2017. Now, uh, real quick, if you try to get this through MBER or a lot of times SSRN, you're going to have to pay for these articles. So a lot of times just go to the website of the professor who wrote it directly from his university. And that's where I got this for free. Just go to stanford.edu or wherever. I mean, if the guy from Northwestern, the guy from, you know, I don't know, Podunk University wrote an article you want to talk about and you can pay for it by going to SSRN or MBER, or whatever the other data points are. And a lot of times you get it for free on their website, because again, it is publish or perish and, and professors got to publish, that's for, for sure. So we're gonna start with the conclusion actually. And you, I mean, just lots going on here, man. I just, like I said, it's probably gonna take two uh, videos to do this, uh, but I think it's so important. All right, so let's talk, we're gonna start with the conclusion and go from there. Our primary conclusion is that working longer is relatively powerful compared to saving more for most people. Our initial base case showed this. Uh, recall the base case was someone who started saving for retirement at 36, who also contributed a total of 9% of their earnings to a 401k plan, 6% was the workers' contributions, and 3% was the match, uh, who experienced a 0% real wage growth. That means their growth of wages kept up with inflation. That's, that's all that means. And a 0% real investment returns. Again, their investments returned the rate of inflation uh, during their working career and who retired and started Social Security at 66. So that's the base. Now we're gonna pull some strings here to give them higher investment returns and retirement different and all that. But that's just a base case study. A sustainable income in retirement was composed primarily of Social Security with a smaller portion from the annuitized 401k balance, 81% to Social Security, 19% to the annuity 401k. Now, before you jump off here and say, I'm not annuitized by 401k, they run different scenarios there too. By working longer and deferring the starting of Social Security, the primary earner could increase both the Social Security monthly uh, benefit and the annuitized monthly income. That is, working longer affects both components of retirement income. On the other hand, saving more, the primary earner could only increase the annuitized 401k balance, which makes up a small percentage to begin with, only 19% of retirement income. For instance, by saving 10% rather than 9 for the entire 30 years, uh, the 401k annuity increases by 11.1%, but that increase only applies to 19% of the retirement income. Therefore, it is not surprising that only three months of additional work generates the same increase of retirement income as 30 years of saving an additional 1% of earnings. It's amazing, actually. Saving the additional 1% does just the same amount for every year for 30 years 
as work in the next three months. When we look at different rates of return on assets, different ages of retirement, singles versus married, the general result remains that working three to six extra months has the equivalent impact of the affordable, sustainable standard of living as saving one percentage point more each year. Increases in saving that start later in life have a proportionally smaller impact. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Social Security supplies a large fraction of retirement income. Deferring retirement increases all sorts of retirement income, whereas savings only increases a relatively small contribution. The saving adjustment required to achieve a particular increase in retirement income is larger the later in the career that you adjust to make that savings happen. In other words, saving more gets less powerful as the, as the career progresses. But deferring retirement remains equally powerful. Man, that is so, oh man. Roughly speaking, deferring retirement by one year allows for an 8% higher standard of living for a couple and surviving a survivor, subsequent survivor. The effect compounds for two, three, and four-year work extensions, and it impacts also on individuals as opposed to married couples as well. All right, so that's pretty interesting. I, you know, in terms of saving more or working longer, that's pretty interesting. And you might be, oh man, that means I got to work longer. Uh, no, no, listen, we're gonna go now. I'm gonna open this up as a as a as a doc here. Oops, wrong one. As a as a uh, a doc, Google Doc, so I can show you the notes I take. I took because it's critical. You can't take notes on a PDF. So let's look at the key insight. Our key insight is that some decisions, such as how much to save in retirement accounts going forward, become less powerful at older age and changing the affordable retirement standard of living. Saving an additional 1% of earnings, for instance, would affect the retirement standard of living much more at age 36 than at age uh, 56. Similarly, the impact of choosing cost-efficient assets, something financial planners, see, bear with me just a second. Uh, frequently emphasized to increase retirement resources, it also diminishes, diminishes, diminishes with age since there are a few years to enjoy the benefit of a lower cost portfolio. So essentially the butterfly effect. What you do at age 36 has huge impact what happens later on at 66 when you retire. Uh, now, what they do talk about, I like this. Annuitizing wealth guarantees that benefits are indeed sustainable and, and protected from both inflation and the risk of outliving your retirement assets and is generally optimal in the life cycle framework. It also facilitates our analysis by ensuring that annuity benefits from a 401k and similar plans are comparable to Social Security benefits for primary earners where the benefit is paid out as a second to die inflation adjusted annuity, i.e. you die, your surviving spouse gets paid for your annuity, joint and life and survivor life annuity and social security as well. We assume that workers claim social security upon retirement and therefore workers who extend their careers postpone the claiming of their social security to their new retirement age. Claiming Social Security, and this is critical, is not necessarily optimal. Uh, upon claiming Social Security when you retire and stop working, is not necessarily optimal. In fact, most primary earners benefit from delaying Social Security to age of 70 regardless of retirement age and using private retirement assets to finance the delay. <sighs> In fact, that is superior using your assets from your 401k to finance your delay in social security is superior to annuitizing your 401k amount and taking social security earlier. However, claiming social security upon retirement actually matches uh, people's behavior is a social norm. We show that postponing social uh, retirement, we show that postponing retirement impacts a sustainable standard of living in retirement for four reasons. One, Commencing Social Security at a later date results in a higher monthly benefit. Who knew? Two, working longer puts more money into your retirement plan. Who knew? Three, because you're working longer and put more money in, you're also not drawing it out, which means you're not taking the money out. Number three, uh, that's uh, number two and number three are kind of uh, one and the same, but it gives a two-pronged approach there. You're adding more money and not taking out money. So that's a two, a win-win. And number four, delayed annuity Purchases result in lower annuity prices, i.e., the older you get, the more bang for the buck you can have on an annuity, all right, because you're more likely to die. So the older you are, 
the more one dollar of payment to annuity will pay you for monthly guaranteed income. Working longer is a powerful method to increase retirement standard of living and has substantially larger impact on retirement consumption than other intern alternatives. OK, so just at this stage, we're just saying the longer you work, that's the best thing you can do to increase your retirement income because of those four things we talked about. Annuities pay more because you're getting closer to death, so they become more affordable. You're not taking money out from your retirement portfolio. You're adding money into your retirement portfolio. And most importantly, you're deferring Social Security. All right. Uh, so for, we already talked about this for near, for near retirees, increasing retirement contributions has even less relative strength. In those cases, a one percentage point increase in the contribution rate may be equivalent to postponing retirement by one month. So it just goes to show you the older they get, the less valuable it is to increasing your retirement contribution amount. All right, that's 10 minutes. Let's pause here. We'll come back for part two of this because it's it's going to start getting deep and personal, actually. And we'll show you why if you're sitting here thinking, oh, I've got to work longer. No, 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 no. The big, the big elephant in the room is.